So today's video is going to be all about the paleo diet and why you should never go on it. I looked up the definition of the paleo diet and it says, a diet based on the types of foods presumed to have been eaten by early humans consisting chiefly of meat, fish, vegetables, and fruit, and excluding dairy or grain products and processed foods. I do agree with the general premise of this diet, you know, sticking to whole foods, no processed foods, just trying to get back to what we ate originally. However, I don't think that they're going about it in the right way. You know, meat and fish, we don't need those to survive. Number one thing I wanna bring up is that all of the major civilizations existed and thrived on starches. We have rice, barley, wheat, corn, potatoes, oats, so many different starches, and the paleo diet doesn't include grain products, which to me is very confusing. It's basically just another low carb diet in disguise, and although they are trying to be more whole foodsy about it, it's still is still not gonna benefit you long term. So I went on thepaleodiet.com and they have a list of the benefits. And the first one that they have is higher protein intake. Dr. McDougall, who is a plant-based doctor and the author of the book, The Starch Solution, said in his newsletter, volume three, number one, from now on, think of the excess protein you consume as garbage that must be disposed of in order to avoid toxic waste accumulation. Excess protein is toxic to our bodies. It's really hard on our kidneys it damages our bones, which can lead to osteoporosis, you know, kidneys, it can lead to kidney stones, and we just, we don't need as much as we're constantly told. Proteins are made up of amino acids, and basically, this, this is what he says, amino acids, as the name implies, are acids. When our body is too acidic, that's when diseases like cancer start to thrive. You know, cancer thrives in an acidic environment, whereas if we eat more alkaline foods, you know, fruits, vegetables, starches, our body's not going to be as acidic, you know, the pH will balance out. This acidic environment is also perfect for osteoporosis and kidney stones, as I said before. Animal products also have quite a bit of sulfur in them, which is part of the amino acid chain, and this, like I said before, feeds cancerous tumors and it's going to, you know, just promote cancer growth. Methionine is another amino acid, and basically, cancer cell metabolism is dependent upon methionine being in the diet whereas normal cells can grow on a methionine-free diet, which, you know, would be a diet not including animal products. This methionine dependency has been demonstrated for breast, lung, colon, kidney, melanoma, and brain cancers. Increasing methionine in the diet of animals promotes the growth of cancers. So, more protein equals more amino acids equals more acid, and, you know, specifically things like methionine, which are literally linked to cancer growth and development. McDougall goes on to say, restriction of methionine in the diet has been shown to prolong the life of experimental animals. Is that vegan? By no coincidence, a diet based on plant foods is inherently low in both calories and methionine, thus the easiest and most effective means to a long and healthy life. Dr. McDougall coming through again. Just to clarify, when he says low calorie, he means like low caloric density. So, you know, plant foods, you, I've said this before, plant foods have a lower caloric density, they're more calorically dilute, so you can eat more of them for the same amount of calories as a really small amount of a, you know, really fatty food like meat, dairy, oils, etc. I've talked about this before, but when you go vegan, you smell better, your breath, your armpits. The high amounts of sulfur and animal proteins are what's causing you to smell bad, and it really just makes you think, you know, all of these products are constantly being targeted towards us, like perfumes, deodorants, toothpastes, just all of these different things. And it's like, if we were just to heal ourselves from the inside out, you know, you, you are what you eat. So if you eat a bunch of really sulfuric animal products, you're going to smell like that. Whereas if you eat a bunch of, you know, whole plant-based foods, you're going to smell and just feel alive. The second point that they bring up on the paleo website is that it's a low carb diet and for some reason they're trying to make it seem like that's a good thing. All of the cells in our body run on glucose which we get from carbohydrates. That's our number one fuel source, it's our primary fuel source, it's the easiest thing for our bodies to metabolize first. When you cut carbs out of your diet or just you know switch to a low carb diet, a ketogenic diet, your body switches from burning glucose as its primary fuel source to fat. McDougall calls this trading health for temporary weight loss, which is exactly spot on. I'm sure we're all familiar with the side effects of ketosis. If you've ever tried a diet or even if you're just, you know, a little under carb, you start to get a headache, your breath starts to get bad, you might feel nauseated, you know, you feel like you have really low energy. And that's why diets are so hard to keep on top of because you're constantly feeling sick and not 100%. McDougall talks about the weight loss that comes with, 
you know, a ketogenic diet, a low carb diet. And he says, the initial weight loss is rapid and therefore very rewarding. You feel like you're doing something right. Most of this, however, is water loss rather than fat loss. So, you know, you're not actually losing fat. You're just losing the water that's in your body. With little carbohydrate in the diet, the body resorts to using its glycogen sources of glucose. Glycogen stored in the liver and muscles can meet the average person's glucose needs for about 12 to 18 hours. With each gram of this stored glycogen, you also have about 2.7 grams of water. So as your body's using that glycogen, it's also, you know, taking that water out of there. And that's the weight loss that you see. It's not fat. It's just this stored forms of energy and water. The carbohydrate ceiling for weight loss may be as low as 15 grams, depending on the individual. This is only 60 calories of carbohydrate, which means a third of a baked potato, a third cup of rice, or one orange. So that's basically all the carbs you would be allowed to eat in order to maintain this ketosis and, you know continue your body burning glycogen and like just why why would you go to all that trouble we crave carbohydrates we feel good after we eat carbohydrates for a reason don't fear the carbs look at people who have been on this high carb low fat vegan lifestyle for a while like a, like years and see the results you know i don't see all these western diseases and you know obesity being caused by steamed rice and baked potatoes and fruit and vegetables it's all being caused by animal products processed foods deep fried foods all this really oily calorically dense food things products the rest of this list makes sense if you were to apply it to a vegan diet but it doesn't make sense like why would you say this about meat you know it just it's unrealistic. We go on to say that the paleo diet will give you a higher fiber intake, higher potassium, um, you know, more alkaline foods, higher intake of vitamins and minerals. Like, that doesn't make sense. I mean, it does, but it's like, why not get even more benefits, feel even better, feel 100%, not have to calorie restrict, and just don't eat the animal products. It just, why live your life in restriction? And people will try to say, oh, well, I just have a little bit of meat, or, you know, that can't do any harm. That builds up over time. You can only be harmful to your body for so long. And you can't eat in abundance if you're eating animal products, because they're so calorically dense that it's just, you. that's how you gain weight. That's why so many people are obese, because... The foods that they're eating don't satisfy their cells. They don't, you're not getting that glucose. So you feel like you have to keep eating and eating. Your body's just trying to compensate. And the foods you're eating are so calorically dense, but so nutritionally dilute that you never feel satisfied and you just end up gaining weight. But then you're still not satisfied, so you keep eating. And that's the cycle of death. So share this video with a friend who might be in trouble, you know, considering the paleo route. Show them the light of the high carb, low fat vegan lifestyle. Just the vegan lifestyle in general, you know. Anything you had as a meat eater, you can have as a vegan. There are vegan alternatives to everything that are yummier. They won't make you feel like shit after you eat them and you'll have increased energy. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe because I post every day and I will talk to you guys tomorrow.